everybody seems obsessed with the cultural issues uh, and uh, everybody, in a sense, takes for granted uh, the economics and, and if anything, they take for granted the wealth and therefore they're just more concerned about how the wealth is redistributed, not how the wealth is actually made. Correct, correct. So one of the big problems that I've seen over the recent years, and you look at the pandemic, um, people would look at that and they would say that there was big pharmaceutical companies that had a vested interest in promoting a, a vaccine that wasn't necessarily healthy for people. And that there was also, uh, I think, a very strong argument to be made that pharmaceutical companies have somewhat of a vested interest in uh, making people sick so that they're living off them for for the rest of their lives, basically. And this is just one example of, I think that there are many different examples of companies that have vested interests in cr promoting an agenda that isn't necessarily beneficial for society and for the individual. So do you think that this is a byproduct of capitalism and, and how, do we, how do we fight this issue? No, I think the whole conception is insane. I mean, that would be like farmers have an interest in people being hungry. So let's create hunger so that we can sell them more food. Uh, I mean, that's ridiculous. Uh, pharmaceutical companies are competing. They're competing to try to make people healthier. And that competition results, the result of that competition is constant innovation in healthcare that makes us healthier. And the reality is that the vaccines were a massive boon uh, and saved a lot of lives. Uh, it saved a huge number of lives uh, on, on a global scale. Now, there was a lot of misinformation. There was a lot of incompetence. And certainly by the political class and by our governments, particularly with regard to lockdowns, uh, you know, mandates, all kinds of mandates, uh, which are a clear violation of rights, and and uh, and and also, you know, all kind of uh, uh, guarantees that you know for for against liability that wouldn't exist in a in a truly capitalist economy. But to blame pharmaceuticals or business for this, I mean, is is uh, is ludicrous. Um, you know, look at look at what's uh, you know the 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 drug right now that's coming out uh, uh, that is dealing with obesity and and allowing people who are obese to lose uh, weight dramatically, and at the same time is uh, massively improving uh, improving heart disease. I mean, you would think that that drug would be suppressed by the pharmaceutical companies if they if they benefited from us being sick. I mean, it's just. I mean, why do we even have penicillin? We shouldn't have penicillin because we should want people to be sick so we can sell them, uh, you know, uh, magical formulas to try to, to try to cure them and make a lot of money off of it. I, I find the attack on the pharmaceutical industry of all the industries in the world the most ludicrous and in some ways the most unjust that I can think of. Uh, you know, life expectancy today is well into the 80s in most advanced countries and in, in unadvanced countries that is well into the 70s in, in third world countries, to a large extent because of pharmaceutical companies. You know, they've improved the quality of life, the length of life. Uh, you know, so many people are taking them. And, and if, you, if you take your pharmaceuticals seriously, you can pretty much eliminate heart disease. Uh, you know, there's so many, the, the treatments, the new treatments that on a daily basis are being announced uh, to deal with cancer and, and the, the survivability from getting cancer is going way up. It, it's just a. It's it just. It's just sad that this is again kind of the misinformation, perversion, and distortion. Competitive markets lead pharmaceuticals to come up with new drugs constantly that are improving human life. And when a drug is found not to do that, it it it, it does not make it on the market. If anything, the problem that we have today is too much regulation. The, uh, you know, an FDA that's way too powerful that it makes it way too expensive to bring drugs to market, and that actually uh, takes drugs off the market that have enormous benefits to some people, but might have some side effects to a few. Uh, so we have too few drugs, we have too, free, too few freedoms, and uh, it, I wish the pharmaceutical business was much freer, less regulated, uh, and, and uh, freer to, to provide uh, a, a, even a wider variety of drugs and medicines for all of us. I think if we didn't have the amount of regulations we have today, I think it, it is not outrageous to think that life expectancy in the West could rise to 120 uh, within, a, within a couple of decades if, if you got rid of the regulations. I mean, the scientific breakthroughs are amazing. And stunningly, I know this is shocking, the pharmaceutical industry is 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 primarily composed of scientists who are trying 
to better human life. The idea that the pharmaceutical industry is is filled with megalomaniac, uh, you know, evil doers from James Bond movie, you know, conspiring to make people sick is 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 bizarre at best.